Pat McAfee to the growing list of people who are just completely over and upset with the state of the West Virginia University program. He joined Kirk Herbstreet and A.J. Hawk on his really popular Pat McAfee show to discuss the ongoing issue at West Virginia as they begin another season 0-1. We're going to talk about that, read an article, watch a video clip, right after this message from our sponsor. This episode of Mountaineer Paul Talks Football is brought to you by Dutch Miller Automotive. Where friends and family pricing means you get the best deal right up front on any new or pre-loved vehicle in stock every time. With brands like Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Kia, Hyundai, Ford, GMC, Buick, and Subaru, the Dutch Miller Automotive family is always growing and ready to put you in the car or truck you've been searching for. Check out our inventory across West Virginia at DutchMillerAuto.com or you can come in today to the home of friends and family prices. Only at a Dutch Miller Automotive store near you. This is for Cameron. Thank you. What is up, guys, and welcome back. My name is Mountaineer Paul, and you have landed yourself here again at Mountaineer Paul Talks Football. And guys, Pat McAfee is obviously one of the most famous alums from West Virginia. He obviously has one of the biggest platforms, if not the biggest platform in all sports, much less from West Virginia. And he had a lot to say talking about the state of the program as Neil Brown is in his fifth year. I think there's a lot of frustration built up. And Pat McAfee is used to how things were when, when he was in school there, when West Virginia was a lot more respected and feared in some situations. So we're going to read a couple clips, watch a quick video, and then I'll give you my thoughts after that, get some comments from you guys, and wrap it up. Pat McAfee sounds off. The Mac school is going to play against Penn State. Pat McAfee, the former West Virginia Mountaineers kicker and Indianapolis Colts kick, Colts kicker slash punter turned media personality, has sounded off about the current state of the Mountaineers. McAfee, who, wears, who appears on multiple media outlets, including ESPN Game Day, was the only person to pick the Mountaineers against Penn State on Saturday. Following the game, he sounded off about the current state of the program. Boy, oh boy, West Virginia fans are about done with O'Neill Brown because he's seven years in, six years in, I forget what it is, it's five years, should not just be such a miracle to think that we would beat Penn State six years into a guy's tenure. We're in the Big 12, got a lot of money, we got an NIL thing that spends money, pays money, like, you're six years in. It shouldn't be where people are like, well, they were able to cure COVID, so we should be able to beat, should be able to beat Penn State. Like, that's not how people should be looking at the game six years into your regime. That, then when it goes down the way it does, they don't even cover. But honestly, six years in, this is all your people. This is all your culture. This is all your thing. And we're a Big 12 school. We've had a lot of, had a lot of success before going against these big schools. Although the national audience may be like, what a surprise. Little old West Virginia. That should not be how it's viewed. You're in charge of winning games and building. And instead, it's like, oh, the Mac school is going to play against Penn State. That's how people are viewing it. That's a mouthful, guys. And, and I, you know, it's once again, here it is. We call it, I called it an echo chamber on my show, oh, probably two weeks ago. Here comes the Mac thing again. We've heard it like three or four times this offseason when the anonymous coach said that West Virginia looked like a Mac team on the defensive side of the ball and they just weren't that big. And here it is again, another guy bringing up Mac. And it's really just embarrassing, guys. It really is. I don't agree with everything Pat McAfee said, and we're still going to watch a clip as well. Um, so, actually, before I go any further, let's check out this clip from Pat McAfee as he talked with A.J. Hawk, Pac-Man Jones, Kirk Herbstreit on the Pat McAfee Show. Sweet Bro, wait a second. I told you. We went through an entire schedule. And I counted five wins. Whoa. You got mad at me. Now, well, now it ain't over with yet. Uh, it is for me. Uh, it's, it's over. Listen, I, I will certainly be paying attention to them beat up on the Dukes this weekend. And sure. I, I, yes. I said yesterday, if West Virginia loses to Duquesne, they need to go rip the visor yes. off of his head. Yeah, on the sideline. With the scalp. Take, Jesus. Jesus. Not, not that. Just with the, the, what's that? They're not what? 
they're not going to lose to Duquesne. I mean, we, when we went through our list there, five well, minutes, that was one of their, that was one um, of their, there's a win right there. Because they got some players. There, there's a loss to fit. There's, there's, uh, I'll give you a win against Texas Tech. Oh, Thank come you. on. Thank you. Come on. Yeah. Thanks. Jeez. TCU, they stink. Yeah. They just lost to, Houston. they just lost to a team that brought an 80-some guy. Yeah. yeah. Obviously. Houston's done. Dana's done. If you don't want to coach here, because I don't want to see it's going to get by then. <laughs> Oklahoma State. Okay. I set the over under. I set the over under at five, and I'm, I'm going to hold. Tr I'm going to hold true to that. Fool. Well, see, for me, I think I've said every single time we're going to go into Happy Valley, we're going to win, and then we're going to go to the College Football Playoff because Garrett Green's going to run wild. Yep. Guess what didn't happen? We did not go in there and win. He ran no, wild, though. He was running all over the place. We didn't complete two passes, though. I mean, we didn't look like a yeah. football team. So then all of a sudden, while I'm watching it, I start getting upset. I'm like, why is this such a big deal that West Virginia is potentially going to beat Penn State? It shouldn't be this way. It shouldn't be five years into a tenure. Like, you know what? You guys are going to actually go Oppenheimer a nuclear bomb and go beat Penn State. Like, that is what people are acting like. It's like, that shouldn't be how we're viewed. We got NIL money. We've had championships. We have them. What? And then now this guy just, there's there's no moxie. No. I mean, this team's crop, dude. This team's crop. Oh, crop. Players are good, though. Really. No job. Players are good. Hey, no hey, job. Hey, <laughs> when, you guys, when you guys played, you guys had difference makers. How many how many guys on that roster right now would, would have played when Pac-Man Jones was on that oh. team? You were on that team. Tavon Austin was on that team. I mean, yeah. you guys had some Those players in that generations. era. Yeah, no, no, how many no, how many guys no, 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 watched no, no, the other night one, would have played on one. those West Virginia teams? I just want to know how many could have survived. Is what I'm saying. Like our workouts are. That's what I want to know. I think that's our biggest issue. I think all of us ex guys' biggest issue is like how they go about doing what they're doing. It's not just about that they do it. And it's like how are we a tough team, a hard nosed team? Is it like does it represent West Virginia? Like that's a great uh, yes. that's a great state. Dude, yes. You know what I mean? So like I think yeah. just the overall of it. I just it's tough. It's tough, and I don't like that. You asking for a change there? Are you asking for a change? I, I, I have no say, and I, what I'm learning is when I say stuff, everybody kind of does it, so I don't like calling for people's jobs and stuff like that, because like people just No. Like, but also, like, come on, bro. You're five years into this thing, and you guys fought, we, they, they, there was not, nobody thought you had a chance against a team that's third in the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. Okay, third in the Big Ten. Could be different this year. We don't know how it ends. I, we, we don't know how it ends. I, They're good. They are good this year. Yeah. <laughs> Big, they're good. That helps me a lot. Yeah. But let's just say they're third <laughs> in the Big Ten if we're to look yes. at how it's been over the last 10 years or whatever it has been for Penn State. It's like we're in the Big 12. It's another power front. And people are saying we got no shot against number three in the Big Ten. It's like, come on, bro. That can't be the case. We got money. You had no shot. You had no shot. That can't be. The, that's what I'm saying. No. That is my exact point here. Kirk Herbstreit. One of the voices of college football for the last three decades. I say, we're going in Happy Valley, Deep Penn State. This guy's fifth year as coach. <laughs> in my face. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. Last in my face That's right. on TV. And it's like, that shouldn't be how people think of your program, Neil. I think we all get his frustration. And Kurt Herbstreit, the smug mf -er that he is, he's picked against the Mountaineers for as long as I can remember. And he's been wrong more times than he's been right. Picks to, picked against us for Oklahoma, picked against us for Georgia picked against us for Clemson. So this is not something that we're not used to with Kirk Herbstreit. But with Pat, you know, I, I, he just wants us to win, guys. He wants something to be proud of. Can you imagine, guys? I don't think a lot of fans realize just how big a deal us winning could mean for us because normally while we wouldn't be talked about as much on the national stage, because of Pat McAfee and Pac-Man Jones, we would be getting brought up and nationally relevant guys. And we would seem cool to kids coming out of school. Oh, I want to play at Pat, the, the school Pat McAfee played at or Pac-Man Jones played at. There's a link here that we're not getting. And, you know, Kirk Herbstreit asked him, are you asking for a change? Even though he said he's not going to do that. I think he basically said what he said, right? You're five years in. It seems like it's a miracle. You're 20 and a half point underdogs going in to Penn State five years into your tenure. It, it really is disheartening.
you know, and, and for those of you that watch me uh, that are maybe newer to the channel, um, West Virginia, as you guys may or may not know, is the top 15 all-time winning program. They have played in national championship games. Obviously, we have won several BCS slash New Year's Six games, and we feel like we should be in the Wisconsin-type level year in and year out. That's where we want to be, somebody like Wisconsin that is viewed as that type of program. Yeah, they may have dips, but generally speaking, they're expected to win eight to ten games, right? And I think that's where West Virginia should be. That's where we would aspire to be. We don't claim to be Penn State. We don't claim to be Ohio State or Michigan. But I'll say this. Five years into a tenure, we should for sure expect, unless we just had some kind of mass exodus to win football games, I don't care where it's at in the country. We played head-to-head -head with Alabama. We played with LSU. We played with Auburn. There's been several times we've, and we've beaten some of these schools on the road in the past. It's not like we can't do it. It's not like we can't recruit for it, and it's extremely frustrating, guys. And I'll say another thing. The NIL situation that McAfee keeps talking about, he's just a little misinformed here. Even though his name is on the website, I think he's looking at the basketball program and saying, well, shit, they signed the number one overall class in the country, your top three. Why can't we do it in football? At the end of the day, you answered your question in the beginning. Neil Brown is five years into his tenure and he still can't win. That is the reason Neil Brown doesn't have the NIL support slash money. He needs to get better players. That's why the crown jewel of this past offseason is Devin Carter, a guy who caught 88 balls in almost five years at NC State. And even if it's four years, that's 20 catches a season on average. Yes, he had injuries, and yes, he does have some talent. And I'm not saying he can't be a Bryce Ford Wheaton-type impact player for West Virginia this year. But I'm just saying, I watched Jimmy Horn Jr. and Xavier Weather both catch 100 yards against TCU in the opening week with, with Colorado. West Virginia was in the running right down to the last two or three teams with both of those players. Why didn't we land them? One, we didn't have a proven quarterback. Two, our offense looks like freaking vanilla extract every single game. It's extremely frustrating, guys. I'm sick of expecting to lose against teams that we normally never want lost against in the past. And even in the past, if it was a team that was supposed to beat us, we all, West, as West Virginia fans, expected to win those games. It's extremely frustrating. I know I've said that ex several times, extremely frustrating, extremely frustrating. It's extremely frustrating. So real quick, guys, just before I forget, if you don't mind, can you like the video? Over 80% of the people that watch my videos are not liking the videos. I would certainly appreciate the help. And if you can't do that, guys, drop a comment below. Let me know how you feel about Pat McAfee's comments. How do you feel about the direction of the program? I know a lot of people are frustrated with Neil Brown. Do you feel like we can still have a successful season? would like to know your thoughts on that. And then subscribe to the channel. I will be doing channel memberships here pretty soon. I'll be doing other types of content, including Penn State content and other teams I want to be trying to follow this year as we go. I'll be doing some kind of Duquesne thing. Probably not much on that, guys. I don't feel like very many people are excited about it. It's not a video that's probably going to do very well, but I will do a prediction. A little, bit, And I'll probably just do my own preview of Duquesne. Uh, it seems like everybody's got the same guy for him this week, so I'm going to move past that. And we're going to try to get through this season. I still think West Virginia can have a pretty good season. I still think we can win six or seven games. Is that what we aspire to be? Hell no. But I think that's something we can get to. Now, it scares me because Neil Brown might be kept if that happens. If Neil Brown wins 10 games, then he earned it, right? But at the end of the day, guys, I think some of us are hoping we do win six or seven, get to a bowl game for the kids, and then move on with a new guy. Maybe Neil Brown Field figures it out, and Penn State just happens to be the best team in the country. That's also possible. And – totally expected if we're that close to the best team in the country that's not too bad i think i said my piece on this guys i hope you enjoyed the video sorry for the negativity just had to get this off my chest seeing pat McAfee upset makes me upset hope you enjoy the video this has been another edition of mountaineer paul talks football guys well, this episode is over i'm out this is for camera
Oh